Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're starting a new series in physics called quantum mechanics. Now quantum mechanics is kind of a mysterious branch of physics. And the reason why it's mysterious is because we fully don't understand it ourselves. There's so many things about quantum mechanics that seem so mysterious, so strange, so out of the ordinary. And the reason is because when we, study, when we talk about quantum mechanics, we talk about the study of physics at the very small level, down at the atomic and at the subatomic level. So I'll try to put a definition in here on the board. Quantum mechanics is a study of physics at the atomic and subatomic level. So that's a good way to express it. But what does that mean? Well, some other ways of looking at it is to say that the basic laws of physics regarding things such as forces, energy, momentum, things that are very common in everyday physics, well, they need to be modified because things seem to be somewhat different when we start talking about the world at the very, very small level, at the atomic and subatomic level. Another way to look at it is to say that things that are not possible in quantum physics, or I should say in classical physics, are possible in quantum physics. So here we make a distinction. So for example, you would never think about walking through a solid wall. But it turns out that the quantum level, at the very small subatomic level, it does seem to be possible for particles to temporarily be in places where they're not really supposed to be, as long as the amount of time they spend there is small enough. And so we'll talk about things such as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which allows things to happen for a very small amount of time that normally would not seem possible at the macro level, as we call it, the normal everyday physics level. So what we then mean is that things such as matter, energy, and momentum, well, they're actually quantized. For example, there's no continuous fluidity from one state to another when we talk about some of these things such as matter, energy, and momentum. Case in point, for example, let's say that you pour a glass of water. You take a picture, picture it's full of water, you pour a glass, and you see a continuous stream of water entering the glass. Well, what happens when we start taking a look at that water at the smaller and smaller and smaller level? Eventually, when we get down to the atomic level, we actually see small little water molecules popping into the glass one at a time. Of course, maybe not one at a time, but many at a time, but still at the quantum level, at the quantum mechanics level, water is not a continuous stream of water, it's actually small little chunks of water called molecules of water. What happens when we take a small piece of gold and we divide it in half, and then we divide it in half again, and we divide it in half, and we just keep doing that? Well, is there a point at which it's no longer a piece of gold that has all the properties of gold, the, for example, the the, the um, density of gold and the shininess of the color of gold and so forth. What happens when we get down to the molecular or atomic level? What if we look at a single atom of gold and then we subdivide that single atom of gold into its constituents? Do all the laws of physics still hold when we get down to that level? What about the energy, for example, the rays that we get from the sun, the energy we get from the sun? What if we start taking a look at that energy a little bit closer, and then we take a look at it a little bit closer, a little bit closer, and we get down to the very minute level, what actually happens at that energy? What does it look like? Well, we already said that it's quantized. In other words, it's not a continuous stream of energy anymore. It's little chunks of energy, little pieces of energy that add together to all of the energy coming from the sun. But when we look down at the small quantum level, what does it really look like? And of course, now we realize that chunks of energy are now called photons, and we need to look a little bit more about how photons interact with matter and with themselves and each other. Also, when we think of things like momentum, when things collide, we know momentum is always conserved. But what happens when we get down to the subatomic level or the atomic level? Is momentum still conserved? And the answer is yes, but at that level, it's no longer a continuous change from one to another. It's again quantized. You can be in different momentum quantized states, but you can go from one to the other smoothly. It's in quantum jumps. So again, when we study physics at that level, things change and we need to adapt to it. And finally, for example, when we look at the basic structure of, of matter, atoms, here's a hydrogen atom with a single proton, a single electron, what does it look like when we actually get down to it? The old Bohr model, the one that we use to explain a lot of things, 
doesn't really hold true for other things. When we really get down to it, we begin to realize that an electron is more like a wave, it's more like a photon, like a wave in space, rather than a single particle in a single location like that. So when an electron goes around a proton, it's basically a wave going around the center of the atom. And so how do we rectify that when we start talking about physics at the quantum level versus the macro level or the everyday level? There's a bridge between the two, and there's an understanding we need to gain when we start talking about quantum mechanics. So this series here is a start to try and gain some understanding in that field. And also, of course, want to start actually working out some of the work, the problems that you may have to encounter when you start studying physics in college. Well, you need maybe some help in how to deal with those problems. And those problems can get quite complicated. So when you're interested in this, stay tuned. First of all, we'll talk about the generality of quantum mechanics, give you a better understanding, top level understanding, and then we'll start delving deeper and deeper into it, start working out some real problems, and see how we deal with physics when we get down to the quantum level. And that's the introduction to quantum mechanics.